So in this video, I'll be trying to teach uh, you about water and why it's so important for life on Earth and all of the unique uh, characteristics that's what, that water has. Now, if you're here just for the IB questions, check the description for where you have to skip to to see them. And uh, if not, just enjoy the video and I hope you learn something. So you may acro um, come across water as being displayed as H2O in your tests um, or your quizzes. Uh, it's just another way of writing water in the scientific manner. And the H2 implies two hydrogens, and the fact there's nothing behind the oxygen implies just one oxygen. And this is so, this is its basic chemical structure. I'll be using this diagram to explain um, why water is so important, um, and you'll see that later. But first off, we know that our bodies are 70% water. That's hard to imagine, but it's true because of the blood in our body, we actually are made up of that much. Um, and same with the earth, it's made up of 70% water. So there must be a reason why there is so much water. Otherwise, like, what would be the purpose of having that much, right? So hopefully you'll be able to understand why there's so much water and why it's important. So first, I want to talk about, um, I'm going to label this diagram. And if you can follow this, because I'm teaching you so you can understand. If you understand this, you'll never have to memorize anything again um, in terms of this topic. So try and follow it clearly and you'll be able, you won't have to memorize anything. So this, by the way, is just a covalent bond. It's what's holding the oxygen and the hydrogens together. It's a very strong bond. You can't break this bond. It's uh, basically impossible to break this. A covalent bond happens between two non-metals. So you can think of metals normally as being solid things. I mean, no oxygen and hydrogen is gases because we can't even see them, they're in the air. Um, but when they bond, they form a liquid because of this bond is so strong. Now I want you to imagine that bond in terms of tug of war. So imagine now that the oxygen and the hydrogens are fighting. Imagine this is the rope and they're trying to pull for it, right? Now, we can see oxygen in there is slightly bigger and hydrogen slightly smaller. So let's label these two guys as either hydrogen or oxygen. So we'll give this guy oxygen and this guy hydrogen. Now we can see hydrogen appears to be losing. This guy's pulling more rope, right? So what does this do in terms of this diagram? So we know that oxygen will end up, after the fight, having more rope, right? So it will be stronger, it will pull the rope closer to itself. Now if we imagine this, this an, um, analogy in terms of um, the real situation, which is electrons. So obviously this is not real rope, but what actually is being pulled here between oxygen and hydrogen is electrons. They're fighting for the electrons. Now if oxygen pulls the electrons stronger, it means that it will have more electrons. So if oxygen is pulling it stronger, at the end of the day, it will have more electrons, like this guy will have more rope. And if it has more negatively charged electrons, then it will be more negative, right? It will be overall, it will have more negative things. So you can say it's negative. So this guy will be have more electrons, it will be more negative. And that means the other guy will be more positive because it actually lost its electrons. It's losing the electrons, so it's losing negative things. And by losing negative things, it means you're overall more positive. And by gaining more negative things like this guy, you're overall more negative. So we can say that the oxygen then is overall slight, and the sign in front just means slight. It means slightly negative. It's not completely negative because it doesn't have all the elect electrons, but it has most of them. So you can say slight. And hydrogen is not completely positive because it didn't lose all the electrons, but it lost most of them to oxygen in, in their fight. So this is now the charge, and I hope if you can just think of this analogy of thug tug of war, that's pretty much what's happening, but just electrons instead of rope. Now you'll see why this is so important, the fact that oxygen is slightly negative and hydrogen is so, uh, so slightly positive. This is the reason, which I'll explain now, why water is so important for life on Earth. Because this doesn't happen with a lot of other molecules. It happens very rarely, and, and water is one of the examples, and I'll show that later. But basically, because it's like this now, 
has these charges, I want you to imagine a glass of water. So in a glass of water, there's obviously not just one water molecule, right? You can't, you can't expect to just have one of these, right? There's many, 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 many of them because you can't even see them. They're so small, so many of them. So you can just imagine there's tons and tons and tons of water molecules in there. But knowing now that oxygen is negatively charged because it's, it's, it pulls electrons stronger and hydrogen is more positively charged because it doesn't pull that strongly, we can apply this in water and see why water is so, in so interesting. So I'll be using this, this one. So remember now that hydrogen is positive and oxygen is going to be negative. Now if you have more than one of these, okay, oh yeah, by the way, so there's actually a number in science that determines how strong each element can pull and we can assign and the number for oxygen is 3.44 so that's like its strength factor and hydrogen has a strength factor of 2.2 so you can clearly see that according to even the science numbers oxygen should be pulling stronger which it does so now in water all of these will be coming close to each other so all of these different molecules will not exactly line up like this I'll show you how they actually line up So this, and knowing, I don't know if you've learned this, but negative and positive charges attract. So they'll pull, pull each other closer. So because the hydrogen is now very positive, and from another water molecule, the oxygen is negative, right? We can imagine that now these different ones, these different charges between molecules will pull each other in. It will make a tight, tight bond, right? So this kind of bond is called a hydrogen bond. And this bond is pretty strong, but it's not, not as strong as the covalent bond inside the water molecule. And by the way, I don't know if you've heard the word polar, but you can think of it in every, an everyday sense. Um, if you have, there's a thing called bipolar disorder. It's when you have like, your you your emotions are at the extremes and they're very unpredictable so similar to this this um, water molecule there's extremes is the extreme negative on one side and the extreme positive this idea is called polarity so you can say water is very polar and because it's so polar it can do hydrogen bonding between the water molecules so to really emphasize more I'll show you how one more would even go and you can imagine this goes on forever and forever and that's what, like, all of these would rearrange themselves to form sort of like this, to hydrogen bond. So now you can imagine there will be another one, say, just right here. And this oxygen, remember, will have a negative charge. So it's very polar. And now this positive and this negative, this, neg this, this negative and this positive charge will form now another hydrogen bond. Just like that. So again... So this, you can imagine adding more and more waters, and this continues on through your whole glass of water. And this hydrogen bond is what causes your water to be liquid. Without this hydrogen bond, you can imagine all the molecules will float around freely, and they'll be like gas, right? There, uh, so this hydrogen bond really holds the molecules so tight together that they are liquid. But it's not tight enough so that it's like a solid, right? So it's very strong. And it holds this together. It allows it to be liquid at room temperature. Because without this, you would basically be drinking gas. Okay. So if you can imagine and understand this polarity idea and hydrogen bond, you'll see why all of water's properties are so important. So this hydrogen bond is really the thing that allows for all its unique properties. Now, you might ask, okay, hydrogen bond is not that impressive. Doesn't, don't all molecules do that? Well, I'll show you right now. Here's an example. Um, methane. Okay. So just like uh, oxygen, it has many different uh, elements bonded to each other. So here's carbon, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Now let's think about the tug of war idea again. Okay, so there's carbon 
pulling now with hydrogen, but this time we'll assign them their strength numbers. So this time, this is a real number by the way, so carbon would have a strength factor of 2.55, hydrogen would have a strength factor of 2.20. So you can see carbon is slightly stronger, but not nearly as strong as oxygen, which has 3.44. So right now, if you can imagine, they're fighting for the electrons, remember? They're fighting for uh, these electrons again. This is the analogy. So they're fighting for the electrons. Right. But since carbon is not that much stronger than hydrogen, this negative charge that happens um, in water, remember, the negative charge happens on oxygen, doesn't actually happen here. You would think, okay, this will happen. But this, this negative, this amount that carbon is a bit stronger, it's not that strong. It's not that much stronger, so it doesn't actually get more electrons. It, the, 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 their, their strength is too similar. It's too similar so that this slight negative and this slight positive doesn't actually happen. It's not, not, the difference is not big enough. So then if you think about the end of the day, how we just compared water with many of them. So let's say now we have um, carbon, um, these, these methane molecules trying to do hydrogen bonding. Remember, and in water it would form between the H and the O because their positive and negative charges attract. Here there is no positive, no negative or no positive charge. So this hydrogen bonding that you would suspect would happen does not happen. The, there is no negative and positive charge to bring these molecules together. And that is why there is no hydrogen bonding. And this is why, and this, this scenario right here happens in most things on Earth. So water is really unique because it allows for this hydrogen bonding, whereas most other things don't. So I hope you understood what I, what I explained here. And um, for my pr the following videos, I will explain why this hydrogen bond is so important in water's properties. So if you can understand, if you can really understand what I was explaining here, you'll find the next steps and the properties of water really um, easily. You'll find that it makes a lot of sense. So I hope you I hope you understand some stuff in this video and um, tune in for the next video to see about the water's properties.